Good morning, welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210. My name is Ariel. And I'm Dr. Katzen. What if we told you that you could lose 20% of your body weight by just doing one thing for 15 seconds a week? Once a week, 15 seconds. That sounds too good to be true. Well, I got the answer. What is it? Zep Bound. Zep Bound. Zep Bound. Zep Bound is an amazing medication uh, which binds to your receptors in your body, not necessarily the liver, but in addition the pancreas, the brain, and the gut. It slows down GI motility, decreases glucose secretion, and you will lose weight. All right, so let's get into these weight loss drugs. All right, let's talk about it. So you may have heard of Ozempic. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, um, you need to know about it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wagovi, Wagovi, uh, Manjaro, Trizepatide, uh -huh. and uh, Manjaro are the sort of the main clusters. So, what is the difference between all of these weight loss drugs? Well, they sort of work the same way. They hit uh, four areas in your body. One, they hit your pancreas uh, to decrease your glucose spikes by secreting insulin. Number two, they hit your liver okay, uh, by uh, decreasing the amount of glucagon, also decreasing glucose. Uh, number three, they slow down your GI motility, so it feels like you're full all the time. Mm. And number four, it crosses your blood-brain barrier and goes in your brain and tells your brain, decrease these cravings. And typically it's food cravings, but it also decreases a lot of other cravings. So those four targets pretty much will almost guarantee you weight loss. And a lot of studies, about 90% 90% of all patients lose weight. Wow, yeah. That's amazing. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. and it's this cluster of um, drugs, as we talked about, the Ozempic, all right, um, this trizepatide, which is maybe even better than Ozempic, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, in the trizepatide, it's also called Zepbound, okay, mm -hmm. and trizepatide is also called Manjaro, so it's a little bit confusing. Uh, the trizepatide, that's the name of the drug. Mm -hmm. uh, Eli Lilly has patented uh, the name Manjaro for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Okay, so All Manjaro right. diabetes. Manjaro diabetes, okay. correct. And that may or may not be covered by insurance depending on the quality of your insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, they've also taken trizepatide and called it another element called Zepbound. Okay. okay, and that is purely for the treatment of weight loss. Think of like uh, a Zeppelin, which is the uh, big inflatable balloons like um, they used in, I guess, World War I, and uh, like the band called Led Zeppelin, and uh, you won't uh, forget it, Zepbound. And uh, that's probably one of the best uh, medications out there for weight loss. Uh, pretty much you're guaranteed about a 15 to 20% weight loss. You, you will lose weight on this uh, medication. Uh, you inject it uh, once a week. It is FDA approved for weight loss. But that doesn't mean all uh, your insurances will cover it. Uh, but we do have programs within the office if you qualify for about $1,000 a month. Uh, you can get this product uh, if you qualify uh, for injections to lose weight. So it's an amazing drug. And we have a lot of patients on it. So we hear the term GLP-1 a lot. What does that mean? Yeah, so GLP-1 is a, a hormone called glucagon, and it's a glucagon-like peptide, glucagon-like peptide, all right? So you gotta understand the uh, sequence. The liver secretes uh, glucagon. Uh, glucagon can increase um, uh, glucose mm -hmm. in your body. Uh -huh. So the main goal of weight loss is to decrease those sugar spikes. Mm -hmm. So if we can decrease the amount of sugar you intake, decrease the amount of food you intake, this decreases the amount of glucose spiking up. Another mechanism is to block the excretion of glucagon by your liver. Okay, and, and that's what these that's what these do. They stimulate that. Uh -huh. They stimulate the blockage of that release. Got it. So can you eat anything you want on these drugs? Yes, unfortunately, yes. Okay. okay unfortunately? Yes. Well, I mean, you shouldn't be eating Krispy Kreme donuts all the time, mm. even though they're yummy, but you really shouldn't. I mean, a uh -huh. long time ago, there was a cookie dough diet. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. But, you know, it works because you're restricting your calories. You're eating junk food, you're eating sugar, yeah. but the fact that you're reducing your calories, you will lose weight. So you still need to, you know, in general, watch what you eat, decrease the amount of sugar as you're doing, try to avoid carbs, concentrate on protein, and exercise all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the take-home message. 
But if you're doing all those or can't do those for one reason or another, this medication is very good. And at the end of the day, the most, one of the most important things is to lose the weight to either treat your diabetes, cure your diabetes, or prevent you from getting diabetes, and also enable you to exercise by surely getting rid of those pounds of excess skin and fat. Uh-huh. And the FDA a few days ago approved Wigovi yep. for cardiovascular disease. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that. Dive yeah. In. So um, uh, recently the uh, FDA approved these medications for the treatment of cardiovascular disease, okay? Things like hypertension, mm -hmm. uh, plaque, um, things like um, plaque in your arteries, in your heart. Mm -hmm. So all these things go together in terms of the uh, treatment of uh, hypertension and a lot of other medical uh, associations with cardiovascular disease. And are those diseases, do they usually stem from obesity or an unhealthy heart? Is that how they go yes, to Yes, okay. usually. So there's the genetic component. Uh -huh. You know, you're born with these situations. This genetic, rather, cards that you're dealt mm -hmm. from your mother and your father, you're more prone to get these diseases. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't exercise and you eat wrong, you know, you're going to be more prone to those diseases. Also, your environment can also stress these diseases coming out. But these medications to help, can help reduce the risk of getting those, regardless of your genetics. Okay, and you have a few patients on Ozempic, Monjaro, et cetera. We, no, we don't have a few. Okay. We got a lot, All right. a lot of patients. And can you tell us about the results that you see? Yeah, so pretty much I would say 99.9% .9 of our patients have lost weight. Okay. You know, we had one patient who said, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, wow. All right, it definitely works. We've had very few, like, I can't think of a single patient that said, I, I want to go off it, mm. you know, uh, or they're having side effects. We'll talk about that in a minute. Or the side effects were so bad that they want to go off the medications. You said very few of that. Very few. Okay. Like, I can't think of a single person. Okay. But patients do have side effects, okay? Uh -huh. Things like nausea because you feel full. Your stomach is not, and your intestines are not moving as much. So you see, you feel full. You can have some vomiting. You can have some dehydration. You can have some constipation. So to minimize those, you don't want to eat as much, okay? Well, that's the part of the goal of weight loss, right? And then also you want to make sure you stay well hydrated, drink lots of water, and also drink, or sorry, eat plenty of fiber. The contraindications, if you have these conditions, we will probably not prescribe these medications. Things like a history of pancreatitis, mm -hmm. okay? Inflammation of your pancreas due to a variety of diseases. Uh, thyroid cancer is a specific type of thyroid cancer. We're not going to dispense it. But the majority of patients do qualify for these drugs whether it's Ozempic, Manjaro, uh, Zepbound. And how likely is it for these to get covered by insurance? Depends on your insurance. Okay. All right, so if you have really good insurance, uh, you know, maybe a PPO uh, uh, plan in the best insurance, it may be covered. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you have uh, a lower grade uh, insurance, it's probably not going to be covered. But if you do qualify, you can get the medicine dispensed. I mean, I can prescribe it. You will have to pay for it. But if you think about the cost benefit, I mean, for $1,000 a month to get rid of weight and improve your diabetes, minimize diabetes, extend your life, mm -hmm. and minimize cardiovascular disease, I think that's worth it. And what do you think the best drug out there right now is? Uh, I like Zepbound. I mm -hmm. think it's really, really good. Uh, it is geared towards the uh, treatment of um, weight loss. I'm oh, sorry, geared toward the treatment of losing weight. Uh, and I think it's a very, very good drug. And can you talk about the percentage of body fat or weight people can see? Lost. Yeah, typically with uh, Zepbound, it's about 20%. So, you know, um, if you weigh, say, 200 pounds, we're thinking maybe about 40 pound weight loss. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah, so that's pretty amazing. That is. And more over time. And if someone is um, maybe morbidly obese, do you think that these drugs are a good option or do you think gastric bypass might be more the route for them? I think they're an excellent option. I think that should be a first line option. Mm. Uh, the medications, again, less invasive um, that you can be. And this, this is a shot you take once a week. Uh -huh. 30 gauge needle, the smallest needle we make. Tiny, you don't even feel it. And uh, medication goes in, you lose weight pretty much almost guaranteed 20% weight reduction. That's amazing. Yeah, All right. that's incredible. Yeah. 
And so we hear the terms ozempic butt, ozempic face. Let's yeah. talk about that. All right. So these are terms that are in the uh, social media lines on, you know, what happens to the butt, what happens to the face after weight loss. Well, they're not just from ozempic. Mm -hmm. If you lose weight, that's going to happen to your butt. That's going to happen to your face anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. So it happens from weight loss. It doesn't happen necessarily from the drug. Yeah, the drug caused weight loss, but if you use another drug or if you diet and exercise, you'd get the same result. Mm -hmm. So it's a result of weight loss. So don't blame the drug, blame the weight and losing the weight. Mm -hmm. Do you think that celebrities have been on this for a while now? Absolutely. Look at Oprah. Mm. Need I say more? And she initially denied it, and now she admitted to it. Mm -hmm. And there are lots and lots, I guarantee, celebrities that are on this medication. It's a very good medication. What's wrong with being on this medication? We have a lot of people, you know, that are embarrassed about being on it or don't want to go on it. Why would you not want to go on it? Mm -hmm. That's what I don't get. I know. I mean, you. It sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Forty percent of Americans are obese. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you be, why wouldn't you want to be healthier? Mm -hmm. All right. If you can't exercise, okay, uh, I get it. If you can't eat right, okay, I, I get it to a point. <laughs> but why can't you do a shot which takes maybe all of maybe 90 seconds to procure and inject mm -hmm. to get healthier? One shot, once a week. What do you recommend for people trying to get it covered by insurance? Yeah, uh, I would recommend get as uh, good of insurance as you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, pay the highest premiums you can, apply through your job, look at the most expensive plan. The most expensive plan will cover a lot more things. All right, so try to get the most expensive plan uh, that you can afford. And that should help to get these drugs. Now, um, there is a shortage, apparently, according to the pharmacists, um, I don't necessarily believe that. Uh, in other countries, yeah, there is a physical shortage of these drugs, mm -hmm. but I don't think there is a physical shortage of these uh, drugs in the U.S. We have uh, special uh, deals with uh, pharmacies that we deal with, both in California and Nevada, where we have access to the uh, semiglutide and the trisepatide that we can get you. Uh huh. And can you talk about? What you recommend for people like to say to their, um, it, would they go to their PCP for this? What they try to Depends. get approved? Depends. You can get it from me. Doing? You can uh -huh. get it from me. You can call us. Uh, we'll talk to you over the phone. We have a registered dietitian on staff. We uh -huh. can have you talk to her. And uh, she'll guide you through this uh, journey of weight loss. So you don't necessarily need your primary care doctor. Uh, a lot of primary care doctors are against the medication. Uh, oh. I'm not sure why. A lot uh -huh. of endocrinologists, okay, are against this medication. But for me, I deal with weight loss pretty much every single day, probably about 20 or 30 patients every single day. I see the repercussions of it, you know, chronic diabetes, uh, excess skin, excess fat, requiring all this plastic surgery. So if you can treat that to begin with, you won't need all this extra stuff. Mm -hmm. And they are FDA approved. They are FDA approved, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so in, in the U.S., I mean, only do things that are FDA approved, please. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the companies spend millions of dollars researching the products, and then they spend millions of dollars marketing the stuff and getting the product out there to be safe. And our tax dollars, all, millions of our tax dollars are spent on studying these drugs to make sure they're safe. So why would you want to just blow all that off and use things? something that may be dangerous uh -huh. like silicone right mm. so so these are an injection that we do endorse <laughs> yeah so these injections we uh, definitely do endorse uh, they pretty much almost guaranteed you're gonna lose weight mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of contraindications which we talked about but if you're interested in uh, losing weight if you're interested in these uh, drugs uh, give me a call and uh, we can talk about to see if they're right for you. Mm -hmm. And if you did have a choice, you would recommend Zepbound right now? Zepbound. I think it's uh, really the best. It's about 30% more effective than Ozempic. Mm. Now, pretty much everybody on the streets of um, any major city will know what Ozempic is. We should do a little uh, spot Pole. check on uh, Rodeo to see, do you know what Ozempic is? And uh -huh. I bet you, I bet you 98% of people will know what Ozempic is. Right. But not many people know about Zepbound, uh -huh. okay? Maybe marketing, maybe blah, blah, blah. But um, Zepbound is about 30% more effective, more effective than Ozempic on weight loss. That's incredible. Yeah. 
say you've had gastric bypass, okay, say you've had, I don't know, mm -hmm. a Roux and Y vertical gastric sleeve, maybe a lap band, uh, maybe a duodenal switch, mm -hmm. uh, you can still take these medications. They do slow down GI motility, uh, the uh, transit of food uh, from your stomach all the way down, and it slows that down. So even if you've had these procedures, you can still be on these medications very, very effectively. So does that mean that people would feel constipated or? They feel full. They feel full, full. okay. Some people get constipated uh, primarily because maybe they're dehydrated and a lot of the uh, uh, water is absorbed from the stool. So you get a little bit constipated. That's why you gotta take the fiber. What do we need to know if we are on one of these weight loss medications before having a surgery? Ah, very good point. So with these medications, again, they slow down GI motility. So we like you to be off these medications for about two weeks before the surgery. Uh, there was an initial study that said uh, two weeks, then it was four weeks. Now I think it's back to two weeks. So it's changing. Now what happens is when we give you general anesthesia through your veins, we give you medication to paralyze you. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is if there's any food in the stomach, it can come up the esophagus like you're vomiting, when we're intubating you, putting the breathing tube down, that food can go in your lungs and you can get a chemical pneumonitis or a chemical pneumonia. And if you're stuck with a pneumonia, uh, that's gonna lead to about maybe six to eight weeks of pretty bad healing. And then you're coughing and an infection, and you don't want that. So we want you off as two weeks before the surgery and about two weeks after the surgery. Got it, okay. You don't wanna be losing weight you know, after your surgery. You need to be actually taking extra protein for you to heal. And so when people are taking these weight loss drugs, it, there is a point of plateau usually, or? Cause they yeah, keep yeah right? they, they, they should start to plateau, okay? okay. Um, but again, 40% of Americans are obese. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to lose weight right. to get you down to It'll a normal level. It'll take them level. a while to plateau. Exactly, so it'll take them a while to plateau. And then once they've plateaued or if they're at a comfortable weight, some people get to their what's called ideal body weight, mm -hmm. okay, what their weight should be based on their height, mm -hmm. all right? And there are all kinds of parameters. It's all over the internet. You can go check it out. But some people reach that ideal body weight and they're like, I'm way too skinny. And they actually want to be maybe 10 or 15 or 20 pounds over their ideal body weight because mm. they think they look too skin, uh, uh, too thin. Okay. Again, these patients are complaining about ozempic face. And that's because maybe they think, oh, I've lost too much weight when maybe they're still overweight, but they just don't like the appearance of their face mm -hmm. or their buttock or their uh, thighs. Yeah, and luckily, all the weight that you lose, any changes that happen can be fixed with plastic surgery, right? Yeah, yeah, typically, uh -huh. yeah. So again, remember, uh, the main goal of this is to lose weight mm -hmm. and to get healthier. Right. And then the side effects, if you do have side effects, usually can be corrected with uh, plastic surgery. Again, one of the reasons why we do facelifts is because of aging, and aging is part of loss of volume of the face. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it sort of goes hands in hand. Not everybody that's gonna be on Ozempic needs a facelift, I'm not saying that, but if you lose enough fat from the face and it bothers you, we do have plastic surgery procedures to correct that. Okay, so don't worry. Yeah. They'll be okay, there yeah. are options. Yeah, and the minority, by far the minority of patients on these medications need any kind of plastic surgery at all. These are again weight loss medications. These are not medications to make you need plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. What do you think the future looks like? Is it gonna be a pill that we take? Yeah, there's already an Ozempic pill, but most pharmacies don't have it yet. Uh, so they already have it, it's been manufactured, but they don't have it uh, at the pharmacies yet. So I think that'll be the future, a pill. Uh, probably with the pill, you'll probably take it every day because of GI absorption and everything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but for right now, I mean, this medication works. Um, what are you waiting for? <laughs> all right, so thank you for joining us today on Plastic Surgery 90210, where we talked all about the new weight loss drugs and Wagovi, which is now FDA approved for cardiovascular disease. Yep, so if you're thinking about losing weight and you want a relatively easy way to do it, once a week, tiny little injection, take you maybe about 15, 30 seconds, you're almost guaranteed to lose about 20% of your weight. That's amazing. That's all right, amazing. well, if you have any questions, let us know, and we'll see you next time. See you next time, thanks. Bye. Bye.